Hey YouTube, just thought I'd uh, show a uh, little information on Samsung washers. Uh, I fixed a, another brand washer uh, that had a similar problem a while ago. Um, actually, the one I'm looking at is uh, the new VRT models. That's the face there. And uh, it's the way the, the bin the front end looks. Actually, you can see there's two there. So, so I bought this one for parts because uh, I had my uh, spider uh, break on uh, on the uh, on the other one here. Here's the one from actually the one I bought, uh, which is uh, still all in one piece, but uh, it's starting to corrode away. And what I'm going to attempt to do is actually um, clean all the dry and wet soap in there, and then uh, fill all these voids. Uh, with a special type of uh, epoxy and then I'm going to seal the sides so that water can't get behind it anymore. That's what I did on a washer uh, about five years ago and it's still uh, working well now. Uh, now here's the uh, other one and uh, here's the bracket, what's left of it over here. So you can see uh, it, uh, it snapped and also the guy... Uh, that was running the washer, uh, I guess, uh, probably by the time you notice it happened, it's banging around, obviously, and pieces flying all over the place. It actually pierced the bin, so I was thinking of just buying that spider bracket, but then when I saw my bin was blown, I was like, oh man, like, uh, it's either I scrap this machine, or I, if I'm lucky enough, I'll find a used one, and I just happened to go check on Marketplace, and I found uh, this machine, uh, which is uh, almost the same model. I checked the on the online and then the spider brackets the same part number and the guy was saying it wasn't draining so thought to myself well uh i'll check the the bracket and uh if it's solid well, at least i'll be able to salvage that and salvage the bin it turns out this one's actually in quite better condition uh overall even uh, it's a little bit you know the people took really good care of the machine it's not scratched like the other one so i'm thinking actually made him an offer he, he still had the dryer so i made him an offer on the dryer and but i picked this one up for a uh, hundred bucks and he even had the drawers so um uh that's a pretty good deal uh considering that all was wrong with it was a uh uh quarter that went into the water pump he was saying that the machine was not draining and i uh, pulled the pulled the pump out and uh, there's actually a quarter sitting in the right in there where the impeller is and uh where did i put that quarter pretty funny it seemed like it there's a quarter in a in a in a washer in there so i'm pretty sure that's what's causing the issue anyways but still like i guess i could have just put it back to use but i was thinking oh man like uh if the if the bracket breaks on this one then it might uh, become uh, toast like the other one so i was thinking well i'll try to actually improve it now, while I unbolted this from the bin, some of the bolts actually broke. So if so, uh, if ever you're having to use a, a used spider, um, um, you got to be careful about that. Well, I mean, what I'm going to do is just drill them out and re-tap them. I might go with a bigger bolt, whatever. But uh, that's what I had to do on the last one I fixed. Last one I fixed was another brand. Can't even remember what it was, but uh, it actually broke around here. And uh, they were a bit smaller in width. And I ended up using like uh, a piece of aluminum into one of these grooves. It was a long groove and a piece of uh, another piece of aluminum on the side. And I did the same on all three legs. And uh, then I, I completely filled all the voids with epoxy and then I sealed the sides with uh, a type of sealant we use in aviation uh, that's what I do for my normal job uh, fix airplanes anyway and uh, so uh, that fixed it but this one's actually got enough meat on it that I think if I sandblast this piece get it all nice and clean uh, I could probably uh, uh, fill it up with epoxy that'll strengthen it also and then having the sides sealed uh, will prevent uh, all the soap from accumulating underneath and and uh, as you can see it it, it it just 
like I cleaned this out a little bit just with a screwdriver here but it was completely full all these voids were full and then it's just acts like a acts like a sponge you know so uh, there you go there's uh, the info anybody uh, trying to repair one of these washers uh, the model that I have is uh, shown right here and uh, the other one here is a slightly different model but same design there you go WF337AAR slash XAC that's the red one that's actually the one that didn't break but uh, it's the same part number spider so it eventually would have broke I'm sure um, so uh, there's the info for you guys hope this helps somebody out out there thanks for watching all right so here we are after a uh, uh, very detailed cleaning uh, I uh, started by scraping all the soap off manually uh, as much as I could with a screwdriver just to get the big chunks out and vacuumed it out then I ended up pressure washing it uh, I was thinking the pressure wash would have you know cleaned her out good but it uh, is actually uh, gets it's very difficult to get it uh, all the soap out of these grooves um, I ended up uh, trying sandblast and that got most of the dry soap and, and corrosion off of the piece. But uh, in these grooves, I uh, had to take a drill and kind of uh, uh, just run it through, uh, do small holes, and then just kind of run it through back and forth. And that was able to uh, mechanically remove uh, the hardened soap. It's uh, quite quite hard it's almost like drilling aluminum uh, it's so hard packed in there but uh, yeah so now you can see what's left of this thing uh, it's quite uh, pitted uh, heavily I mean uh, still feels fairly solid but uh, I think uh, filling all these voids up with uh, this uh, special epoxy that I'll show you guys later uh, what I'm using it's kind of like GB Weld so once all these voids are full on the front and and right on the back and on the front I think uh, this piece will be much stronger and uh, and then even taking the whole piece and gluing it on the bin with the with the thick uh, two-part sealant that I'm going to be using uh, should uh, also give it some strength and prevent it from uh, from wobbling on the bin even if you'd have a weak spot you know, it'd be glued down, plus all these voids filled up will definitely sh make this, like, solid as a rock, I think. And I uh, um, wouldn't be surprised if I could get 10 years out of this, uh, even whatever the rest of the life of the washer is. Probably something else electronic will break, but uh, this will still be there. Because uh, I've done a similar repair, although that one was snapped, but it was... I had less confidence in that one because I was afraid that maybe... The aluminum that I used, I basically put like aluminum strips all the entire length because there was enough of it left. It wasn't like this one here, which is totally disintegrated. There was enough. It was basically like uh, broken clean. And so I put these big aluminum plates on the sides and into the groove. They were long grooves. Uh, I put some angles uh, into the similar to JB Weld uh, epoxy and... Uh, and that uh, gave me uh, lots of strength because it's been about five, six years and it's still going strong now. Uh, and I think uh, it's going to probably outlast the washer now. Um, but uh, we'll see about this one. I'll, I'll show you uh, some more uh, once I get the progress uh, a little. Uh, once, I, once I get it all filled in, I'll show you guys what it looks like on the bin. See you later. Hey guys, so here's the results of uh, the uh, spider after a good cleaning and and uh, I primed it with uh, this product here, uh, uh, zinc chromate. Uh, it's not actually real zinc chromate, but uh, it's made for for etching and priming aluminum, and uh, it's good for underwater use. So. This thing is definitely going to be seeing some underwater use. But um, 
I've also tapped and threaded the bolts, some of them that, that broke. It was a metric size and I went with uh, 5 sixteenths uh, hole on the ones that, uh, like this one, uh, is one I drill, I think. There's uh, four, and that's a pain in the ass to do as well. Uh, starting to regret taking this apart now because it's taken so much of my time. I only do an hour here and there, but uh, still it adds up. Uh, the way I drill those uh, broken bolts out is I used basically uh, like uh, increments. You start off with a really small bit and work your way up to a quarter inch, but very progressively because drilling stainless in an aluminum casting, you have to really take your time and try to get it well centered when you start. Uh, so yeah, I had to do four and uh turned out all right um they they're the holes aren't exactly perfectly straight but uh but uh for the use that it has uh it'll be fine we'll just put some 5 16 stainless bolts in uh to replace the uh, original ones uh the ones that uh that I'll, that i don't uh, have you know so there you go progress keeps on going now i'm gonna be sealing uh, one side of it uh, today and then the other side the next day hey guys so here i am after the first layer this has actually been applied and dried overnight it's hard as a rock now just to give you an idea of uh what this stuff looks like when i'm mixing it i had to do a huge batch this is a huge area to fill i don't even know if i'll have enough on my plate there but uh, this is the stuff. It's called uh, Algalite AV1258. And uh, this stuff was given to me actually because it's uh, been expired for uh, two years already. So it's, uh, it's way more thicker than it usually is. Uh, so it's a hell of a job to mix. Uh, but here, here is it on my mixing plate. Uh, I have a big blob of it there and uh, I basically emptied out these two cans. I have more if I need it, but uh, hopefully that'll be enough. But uh, I'm having doubts because that's a huge, huge voids to fill. So I might have to mix up some more. But uh, this is the quantity of, uh, of uh, it's, it's kind of like a, I guess they call it a, a structural epoxy or adhesion like it we use it uh to glue uh, uh metal together and uh like it has about when it's all uh in perfect like you know when it's not expired and everything and the surfaces are rough and everything it's got about a 600 6, pounds per square inch uh, uh strength to it uh that's a thin layer of it obviously i'm doing a big thick layer here but uh, the purpose that I'm using it for is more to strengthen the piece and to protect it from corrosion than rather than gluing bonding two metals together, but it bonds really hard. So, so uh, uh, from my past experience, I know that this works anyway. So I thought I'd show you guys uh, what that stuff looked like and what it is. Hey guys, so uh, finally done. This is what it looks like, all finished and painted. I actually, uh, once I was done with the uh, glue all inside these voids, I, uh, I, I kind of sanded it down a little lumps and stuff that, that you know, that might have stick, sticked out and hit the bin there. So I gave it a quick sanding and I primed it and painted it once more. And uh, that's what it looks like. So as you can see now, soap can't get underneath. It's glued down to the bin. All the voids are full on underneath and on top. Nothing's getting under this freaking thing anymore. You could probably fill this thing up with lead weights and uh and it and it still wouldn't break. <laughs> Anyways, uh next will be uh the high speed test. Thought I'd show the bolts that I used. They're actually uh, just from the hardware store, stainless steel 
with the lock washer 5 16 that's the uh, tap that I use to rethread the uh, casting and uh, those two are two of the uh, 5 16 but here you can see I have a 5 16 and uh, the original 10 millimeter it's probably an M8 or something like that anyway and uh, the dimensions are pretty much the same once you torque it down I also put some Loctite in there so uh, she should hold also I thought I'd show you guys uh, the paint that I actually use it's a PPG product same people who make the uh, sealant I'll show you that in a sec. This is a very good uh, polyurethane uh, paint. Expired. It was made in 06, so this actually expired in 2008. Still fucking great paint. <laughs> um, it's a three-part, three-part mix. There's a there's a hardener that goes with that and a thinner to spray it. And uh, the sealant that I used looks like this. It's uh, also made by uh, DeSoto. Uh, it's all stuff that I got because it's expired. This here is the one that I use. This is the, uh, I use about nine tubes of this stuff. It's only six ounce tubes, so it takes quite a bit to, to fill behind there. And, uh, and actually it's not completely full. I kind of zigzagged. The, with a thick layer of uh, sealant underneath the the bracket there and then uh, sealed the sides should be good but uh, yeah PR 750 B half uh, is a uh, sealant we use in fuel tanks so it's resistant to uh, uh, it, it basically seals up the inside of aircraft uh, fuel tanks very solid very strong stuff we also use similar sealants on the outside of the airplane uh, and uh they're very tough i mean these things get exposed to like minus 70 and chemicals and everything resistant so uh should hold anyway thought i'd show you guys all right here we are spinning at high rpm fairly balanced because these things have balanced rings and uh even if you get it a little bit off it actually uh, self-balances uh i actually uh Probably didn't get everything spread out exactly evenly, but we're right now we're running at full RPM and she's pretty damn, pretty damn smooth. So there you go, slowing down. Now. 